Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. And over the past several weeks, InfoWars has been documenting the immigration tsunami that has basically flooded into the United States as our borders collapse and our federal government stands down. This week, our crew is in Marietta, California, where illegal immigrant protests on both sides of the argument have squared off against each other in what has become a potential flashpoint in the battle over the control of our borders. We are now joined by Joe Biggs, who is on location in Marietta, California. Joe, what's the latest out there in California? Roger that I'm live right now in front of the Border Patrol Station in Marietta, California, like you said. Right now, the police have uh, actually come through here and they've been telling all the protesters that if anybody kind of gets out of control, gets violent, they will be doing their job. They will be arresting people. They uh, came through and told us where we could park and where we couldn't and things like that. But what was interesting a second ago, uh, Darren, was the brown shirts from Lackland Air Force Base. Do you remember those guys? Oh, yeah. They were just here a minute ago. There were two guys standing over there talking with the uh, police, the local law enforcement and the border patrol agents. So Obama has sent his contractor bullies out here to uh, help out and force and, you know, basically just rough people up tomorrow. It's going to be a very interesting day. Right now, mainstream media has their vehicles parked. People are lined up and down the roads behind me getting ready for tomorrow's showdown. The people in Marietta are not going to stand down whatsoever. They said that they are ready to be detained and they do not care because they will not let this illegal immigration tear their town apart. Wow. So you have the brown shirts from the Lackland Air Force Base. Meanwhile, you have brown berets that represent the La Raza militant group who are uh, showing up at the same time. So this is a potential flashpoint that once again, you find you got uh, you guys find yourselves in the middle of. And I'm curious, what do you expect as tensions begin to rise during the next couple of days? I mean, as soon as that bus, you know, approaches tomorrow, things will get very hot and very crazy fast. I mean, the cops are already getting ready. They're, they're lining up in their, their police bikes and everything like that. Everyone's ready for almost just like an epic immigration battle out here. And who knows, La Raza could show up once again. They did last time. Well, this whole thing got started last week when protesters turned out to block the street to the Border Patrol facility, and they forced the Homeland Security buses that were carrying the the um, illegal immigrants, mostly children, from Central America. But they, they, they blocked the street. They made the buses turn back and go back in the direction that they came from. So that's how this all got started. So like you said, the people in Marietta, California are basically drawing their line in the sand right now. They are saying enough is enough. And in stereotypical established media fashion, they are portraying the anti-illegal immigrant protesters you guessed it as what? Racist. And this is what they do all the time. I was even watching Rachel Maddow the other day. And rather than finding, I'm sure there's plenty of Hispanic Americans, black Americans who are members of the Marietta community who are out there protesting along with the illegal immigrant protesters. But MSNBC, they have to target the, the guy that looks most like a white supremacist, and that's who they go to. What do the people in Marietta think about the treatment that they've been receiving from the mainstream media? Well, they feel like they've been misrepresented completely. You know, the thing is with these, you know, liberty-loving Americans is they've been nonviolent in this whole thing. The only thing they did was stand in front of a bus and said, no, you're not going to come in here. You're not going to make my town go bankrupt. But it's the people who are violent are the ones that are coming from Northern California from different places, not from this small town. Everybody in this town is a very small, close-knit, tight group of people who've known each other their entire lives. They just simply want, you know, these illegal alien children to go. They don't want that here. And that's all they're saying. They're very uh, peaceful. They're very, you know, docile. They've been very nice and informative. But, you know, right now, there's not one pro amnesty person here at all. They're not keeping up their fight with this. It's just the Americans, it's the locals that live here in the town that are staying out here day in and day out, 24 seven, leaving someone here on call. And at the slightest tip that a bus comes in, they call and within 10 to 15 minutes, 200 people are ready to show up and show their support for their town and for America. 
Well, what about the people there? What, what's their reaction been to the La Raza militant groups, uh, groups that have showed up? Do they understand the historical significance of La Raza? Well, and do they well, know what, what La Raza stands they, for? They think it's the Obama administration's tactic. They know that they fund La Raza. They know that a lot of these people fund them. And the Obama administration has made it clear they want no part in this issue whatsoever. Obama will not even come close to the border. The closest he's going to come is Dallas. I mean, come on, show some, show some something. I mean, just try to be patriotic for once in your life, Mr. President, and do something. He won't even get near here. And of course, he's going to send La Raz out here. He wants to stir up tensions. He wants to see these Americans get riled up and see if any of them will make a move so he can use it against them and call them terrorists. Well, that's it. And it's all about racial division. And, and I'm glad you're there to interview the people in Marietta. I lived in Southern California for 20 plus years. I raised my children there. I even was on a construction crew that built a house right there in Marietta, California uh, many years ago. But uh, I can tell you firsthand, I, I know the territory, I know the people, and I have plenty of Hispanic friends who are, are very adamant and very against the open border policy by the rogue Obama administration. Now, I wanna show some pictures to our viewers, and these are images of La Raza protesters, as well as the signs that they carry. We're also going to take a look at the massive La Raza propaganda campaign that is in full swing right now. And of course, they have La Raza radio stations all over the country that encourage the reconquest of America. Here's a sign that the Brown Berets are holding up at a protest. If you don't like our people, get off our land. Here's a mural with a powerful message. It says, American terrorism. It says, justice is our creed. La Raza Unida. Uncle Sam stole the Southwest. Next, we have a young Hispanic gentleman wearing a Azatlan Industries t-shirt. Now, these are very popular. They have t-shirts, hats, uh, all kinds of uh, propaganda that shows the, uh, basically, the conquered map of the United States. Here's the next one. La Raza has no boundaries. Migrant youth are our warriors, or our warriors. Another sign held up by demonstrators. You are on stolen Native American and Mexican land. Then you have a recruiting poster. La Raza needs you. See your local recruiter. Join the Brown Berets now. Plus Civil War and Reconquista. This has an image of an AK-47 and the U.S. map that is conquered by La Raza. So there's no question that this organization is hostile towards America. Joe Biggs, your comments. I mean, it's funny. The, uh, the Obama administration picks their contractors to wear basically the same uniform as the La Raza. I mean, it's right here in front of everybody's face, and yet no one can wake up and see that whatsoever. You know, <laughs> it just makes me laugh sometimes to see these lies and these things so blatant, and yet so many people just can't open their eyes and see what's really going on to our country right now. But thank God we have people like the people of Marietta here. They uh, actually created this uh, Facebook page called Stand for Marietta, and on there, they're all in there voicing their opinions about what's going on, talking about functions, the city hall meetings and things like that. And uh, the people that are on there are African-American, Mexican-American, people from all walks of life who are for the anti-illegal immigration side. You know, the people that are the, the pro-amnesty, they're just out here just to start some trouble. That's all they're doing. You know, the people here are a very diverse crowd and they're all willing to stand up for what's right and what's for America. They don't want to just be let into our country. They are also demanding food, shelter, clothes, medical care, and free education, most of them welfare parasites. And they're no longer asking for amnesty. They are demanding that the U.S. opens its borders entirely. And unlike past waves of immigrants who have come here to become responsible members of American society, these people reject American society altogether because they've been told that America rightfully belongs to them. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everyone has this sense of entitlement nowadays, and now, <laughs> now we're giving it to the illegal immigrants. Right now, there's a city right down the road, Escondido. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yep. They came together in a town hall meeting yesterday with 500 people showing up. 
and they were going to give 96 homes to these illegal alien families and 500 people showed up to the meeting and they voiced their opinion and they voted against it. That's another city standing up to the administration saying, hey, you're not going to bring that here in our home, in our town. Wow, I must have missed that on MSNBC. Uh, what's going on right now is, is El Presidente Obama has basically opened up the floodgates by enacting the, the, the DREAM Act, right, the Deferred Action Plan. And this has inspired the massive immigration takeover. Uh, Staff Sergeant Biggs, your closing comments. Well, it's just like uh, in uh, the movie America that Denise D'Souza made. It's American suicide completely right now. He is killing our country from the inside, from the White House, and draining everything we have. They're taking, it's like a tidal wave right now of immigration, and they're trying to take out city by city with this flood of illegal alien immigrants coming through. But luckily, we have a lot of these people that are prepared and willing to stand up. All right, Joe Biggs, uh, looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the crew, the reports to come out. want to remind everybody to be sure to check out Infowars.com and be sure to go to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube for continued reports from the border crisis and the border showdown, I should say, from Marietta, California. Joe, thanks for coming out. Now, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we have two, count them, two special reports from none other than Alex Jones. And this will be from our new TV studio in Austin, Texas. And you don't want to miss this one, folks, because I'll give you a hint. One of the reports questions the sexual orientation of the First Lady. Uh, yeah, you're not going to want to miss that one. So the uh, InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. Stick around. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Well, you never know what to expect on the Alex Jones Show. And this morning, the topic came up that Michelle Obama might be a man. I know that might sound ridiculous, but is it? Uh, after all, there are many questions surrounding the president's past. And now people are starting to question the sexual orientation of the first lady. Alex Jones has a special report on that from our new television studio in Austin, Texas. But first, here's what Joan Rivers had to say to kick the controversy into the mainstream. 